A lot of the time. But he stopped them operating out. Uh, he, he, they said that, first of all, the says he didn't want, prior to the Carib, that he didn't want to hire any Union Irish guys. He was blocking the drilling company from hiring us. Even though we had long standing industrial relations agreements with a lot of the drilling companies. So he threatened to move to Air in Scotland. And that'll be significant in a second. Um, Stag says to be a can't claim Irish tax breaks operating out of Scotland. This is meant to be an Irish economic, for the Irish economic area. This is the way, this is, this is what it's meant to be. He was putting the foot down on that one. So grudgingly, McGoldrick accepted, but there was problems in that rig from day one. But again, we had the line there. And once that, that was around November, sorry, October 2006, uh, sorry, October 1996, the day they finished, I think, I think Maura, you might have this, a company was set up in the Bahamas called Enterprise Energy Incorporated with the same board of directors that was in the Irish board of directors. Now at that stage they were known as Enterprise Oil, they weren't called, called Enterprise Energy. And written into this tax deal, the 1992 tax deal, there's a lot of strange stuff in there. That doesn't make any sense at the beginning, but when you, it's always in hindsight. Companies the strange things that Irish companies have to buy the oil and sell it on, but they're actually companies within companies. There's a whole lot of... You'd want a forensic accountant to go through it. Now, when that well was plugged and abandoned with a view to coming back, it was two years later, Fianna Fáil were back in power in 2000, sorry, 1998. And again, we claimed the jobs. A much bigger rig called the Setco 7-Eleven was coming back to to do what they call appraisal drilling. And we knew well when they hit a field like that, it was massive. So the companies, we had it out. They set up a situation where they brought in other crews and they just tried to make a gauntlet at it. We blocked them at the pier and fines. We had problems in Dublin Airport. We had problems in Shannon Airport, where those people had been flown in. And in the end, the confrontation actually, it was, we, we, had, we, couldn't, we couldn't not do it, but we knew the outcome was that that government would allow them to operate out of Scotland. Air is an old coal port up the Clyde estuary there. And, sorry, it's, it's more south. The, um, a TV camera went over from Ireland to see why, why particularly Air. Now Air, the docks in Air was just abandoned warehouses, abandoned buildings, the whole lot. It was being converted into modern warehousing, apartments, there was tower cranes, and when the camera person, uh, when the cameraman and the reporter in Canila tried to get in, they were told by the harbour master that John McGoldrick would have to give them permission. Now, why would the general manager of an oil company in Ireland have to give permission for the harbour master of a Scottish port to allow people in to film? But they got up on the roof and filmed anyway. And there was all kinds of threats, and they were being threatened to be brought to court by Enterprise Oil and T.G. Carr, in fairness, backed their reporters and their camera person. So. Enterprise back, back, back down on that one. So it starts to become clear that apart from the whole oil bad deal, that the, that the state was also willing to allow the highly lucrative jobs, goods and services out of the country and that air would become the main base. And the reason air was picked was because its central location in this Atlantic margin from the south here right up to the north of Scotland. There's an established Oil, oil industry in Scotland. It's based in Aberdeen, the Grampian region. And this figures, this just I'll give you a figure. 2001, these figures came out. And I don't know what the latest ones are. In the period from 1976, when it all started, I was up there at that time, till 2001, the Grampian region made 198 billion in sterling from the oil and gas related activities. The money went into the coffers of, uh, in London. But the jobs, goods and services and the massive spin-offs, there was 336,000 people working in oil and gas related activities. Eight to one ratio. Each offshore job, there was eight onshore. That's from the, the, the offshore, the rigs, the platforms, the supply boats, 
pipeline lane, the manufacturing of rigs, the building of rigs. I was on one yard where there was 10,000 working. There was the administration, training. The Dice Airport in Aberdeen started off as a prefab, prefab buildings and a runway, and it became a major international airport of what it is today. Now, the North Sea is in decline, and there's vested interests up there that wants to keep, see their established businesses going. They see that the West Coast will, in time, at a lower, at a lower scale, it's a much more technologically difficult operation because of the depth of water and that. But it, they're advancing all the time the technology. And the West Coast, there are proven fields. Fonyeven, Chikihal, and all of them up along the West Coast of Scotland, off, off, off the Outer Hebrides, and then up off the Faroe Islands. So they, they've already started to have commercial finds. And then come down along, you have Corrib, you have Dewish, and you have all the other stuff that they're just sitting on. That won't be declared until it suits them. That they won't do anything with until it suits them and the way that they want to do it. Because they've been allowed to do that. So air is, taken, is, is an industry already in place, up and running. When they want to do it, it's the established Scottish oil industry. We try to get that across to the state. We try to tell them, you're losing out in terms of the revenue. Don't lose out in terms of the economic spin-offs from this whole thing. They're absolutely massive. No cost to the state. We explain the types of jobs, 400 different types of businesses that could come out of it. A registry was done up by Irish companies that could do this kind of work. The oil companies threw in, even though there was supposedly free movement of jobs, goods and labour, and they used that to get us off the picture by bringing in crews. But they suddenly brought in all kinds of codes and standards that the Irish companies didn't have, that only established UK or French or Dutch or whatever companies had. So some of us were brought onto this talk and shop, the oil and gas framework group, about two years. And it was a waste of time. But what I did learn there was the craven attitude of the civil servants, the Petroleum Affairs Division. That nearly when an oil company man would walk in with his briefcase, they'd hop up, they'd hop up nearly and, and, and salute. It was just pathetic to see it. There was times I'd be saying something and I'd be getting a, a thought, like, Shh, don't say that. And I'd look down and say, why are you kicking me? It was like, these guys had all the answers. We didn't have anything. We knew nothing. They were going to do anything. Don't upset them or they might go away. And that's the current attitude that advises ministers. So. I'm saying now, and I'll say it openly, I'll say it on the record, that I think we lost, we've lost our resources. It's not just by corruption, there's a combination of corruption and stupidity. And the stupidity is those who we've put in charge with the Petroleum Affairs Division. I suspect corruption. Corrupt, proven corrupt people have never been investigated on that aspect. I'm naming Ray Burke. He's never been investigated on that aspect. He's been looked at his licenses for uh, telephones, He's been looked at his TV and radio licenses. He's been looked at his planning decisions. One very significant ministry has never been looked at. And it, I think it has the main, I've called it the biggest scandal of all, because it has the, it has the potential to, for the, to the biggest loss of all. And I talk about the loss now. And then I'll finish with the comparison.